Okay, okay I think we're rolling. There we are. Okay, I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, you start. Okay, you start. You start. You start. I did this yesterday. You start. You start. You start. You start. You start. You start. We all start. <laughs> all right, here Hi! We go. Welcome to Bricks Corner. I have an old friend, Mike Sable, who you all know, a zipper, been a bodybuilder for like a hundred years and still in fantastic shape. And he trains a lot of women, and the lady he brought today's name is Audrey Kale, who's uh, been training no more than nine months, right? Oh, we're almost a year, year now. Yeah. We're almost a year. Next yeah. month. And she's in terrific shape because genetically she's got the gift of the body, but she's just going to elaborate on it and chisel it into something beautiful, which Mike is doing for her, and then she'll be able to go from there, right? That's exactly right. That right. was so eloquently put. Um, Let's talk about what you're working with, how you're working with her. Well, you know, what, what we're doing, now, not just her, but my women's team, and they're called the Z Girls, okay. Zipper Girls. Yeah. You got that? You feel no, it? Okay. I don't. Okay. That's I'll explain okay. it to you later. We'll get you a hat. Anyway, anyway, um, yeah. they're called Z Girls, and what I've done, we're forming a women's team. Yeah. Okay? My women are all natural. They take no performance enhancing drugs whatsoever. And I'm not here to slam. You make a choice in a sport. You're right. But we're trying to keep these girls natural and teach women how to do things the positive way. Not just competitive women, but the average woman, the average everyday woman. Right. Uh, no matter what level you're at, to do things properly because all of the all of these let's just call it crap ass diets that they have out there. Yeah. And we'll call them diets. I do nutritional programs. I don't do diets because the first three letters of the word diet tell you where you'll end up if you stay with them long enough. That's right. You know, they're regurgitating nutritional programs, quote unquote diets, from 50, 60 years ago and calling them something else. Mm -hmm. There's nothing healthy about them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you realize when we, when we got in shape back in the years that we trained, we got in top competitive shape doing 10% fat and splitting the protein in the carbs. Well, okay, let me say something real quick about that. That was done, actually started in about the 40s. Oh, yeah. And the 50s, and, and then it went from there, and then you had the Atkins diet, the Beverly Hills diet, the Zone diet, all took off on that and put their own names on it. Right, exactly. So, And, and it's basic. It's basic, and it's just a regurgitation of the same thing. Exactly. And now people are going, well, we do 16-hour fasting and stuff like that. Do I believe in that? No. Do I think fasting is a bad thing? No. Okay, but fasting for 16 hours, you're basically taking your metabolism and sledgehammering. Exactly. Metabolism is created through eating proper. That's what keeps that metabolism burning. You eat the protein, the fats, the carbohydrates, the vitamins, minerals, and water. And eating that throughout the day several times makes the furnace burn hotter and hotter and hotter. I have an analogy for that. Do you want to hear it? Yes. You got a fireplace burning in your house, and the wood starts to burn out, so you add more kindle to it. The fire goes hotter and more than it burns out. So the more you feed that throughout the day in your metabolism, the hotter the fire gets and the more fat it burns. The more fat it burns and also creates energy. Right. Food is what creates energy. So, you know, I'm listening to all these things, and I'm more than, more than happy. All you guys do what you got to do. But reality is, you know, I've been around, I'm 62 years old. I've yeah. been around this sport, competed professionally and at all levels, won at all levels. And the bottom line is, that's what I want. I want to get these, but you can get in great shape. You can feel good about yourself. You can have a spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical balance without overdoing or going crazy. Yeah. And believe me, they train hard. Yeah. But they're fueled to train hard. Right. They're fueled to burn fat. And it's not, they're not looking for some outside thing to make the difference. Right. I want them to make the difference. I want them to feel comfortable. I mean, to me, working with the women or guys, if I, have, if I know the wrong stuff and something happens, and I haven't said something, mm -hmm. who's responsible? You are. I'm responsible. So my idea is keep these women in great shape, okay? Teach them to, if they want to get a competitive level or just to feel good about themselves and look better, to teach them the proper ways. And there, it's being so misconstrued now, Rick. There's so many nutritional programs around, so many things. And the dietary market in this country is a $50 billion a year gimmick. Mm -hmm. It's not a $15 a year, $50 billion a year, or $50 billion a year thing that's going to make a difference. It's how they make money. Of course this is how they make money. Yeah, so they're, they're basically feeding you concepts and things that don't work. They have nothing to do with physiologically, with your anatomy, anything. they're telling you stuff that's going, basically, you'll never stay with it. No. So these people lose X amount of pounds, but they don't realize they're probably losing 70% muscle. You know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of when you have a home gym and you're gonna fix your home up, you're gonna use it for about a month and you're never gonna use it again. Exactly. I had it sitting out there forever and I said, don't you, what do you believe in home gyms? I said, if you use them, fine. But you won't. It's so much easier to walk in the gym while you're prepared to train and all that. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And I think so we, what we've got to do is my whole concept, and I'm gonna sign, we've got people that are losing their lives now oh, yeah. in our sport. Yep. On both sides. Yep. You know, and that are unhealthy. They're not old, but they've just their health has gone downhill from the things they've done. It's progressive. Yeah. I mean the baby boomers took the LSD and the drugs, so now they're saying, How do I add a couple of years to my life? Mm -hmm. after what I've done. So what we want to do is we want to teach people by going across the country, doing seminars, getting out there and explaining to people, women and men, how to do this properly, how to increase your life, make your life better, get in the greatest shape of your life, mm -hmm. 
but do it and understand that it's work. It's not a pill. It's not anything magic. And if you do it that way and you're cutting corners, you're not really achieving what you want to achieve anyway. Well, nobody ever made it without hard work. No, exactly. So you tell me, Audrey, how'd you meet Mike? How did I meet him? Well, he contacted me first. Where'd you see her? I contacted you he first. You never see me. At Kale? Well, I went to the athletic club, tried it out. I was like, okay, you know, I was so tired of the commercial gym, like yeah. the 24 hours. I was like, eh, I need something different. I need some different motivation and a different way to drive me in the right direction. Right. Um, because previously I competed in bikini. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I don't feel like I'm done. And then I tried out the gym. I was like, okay, I like it. I talked to the people there. I was like, okay, um, is there anyone that does um, competitive like bodybuilding mm -hmm. training and then I put my name down and then he contacted me a few days later first thing he did was ask me five questions I can't yeah. remember what the five questions were <laughs> but it was on point <laughs> and then I answered it and he was like okay why don't you come in and we would talk yeah. and that's that's how it all started well you had something good to work with oh yeah absolutely I mean I see that she had the but I wanted to make sure she was a very quiet she would never heard those sentences out of her when I started with her yeah. I taught her to be good and bad yeah. but she was very quiet, very subdued, and really not out there. And I said, "Look, this is not a sport you can be can be of. You got to come. You got to you got to be in there. When I'm talking to you, you got to be vocal with me. You got to mm -hmm. talk to me because otherwise, I do things. I get pissed off, and that's not good. That's not good. Mm -hmm. You're in here to work. I expect you to work hard. I expect you. And she's come out of her shell and changed and became such an an amazing not just athlete but person. Yeah. She got her bachelor's degree in psychology while she was training for her show. That's amazing. I said, you know, I'm looking at one like this. This girl's good. And she is so on point. If I tell her to eat five ounces of chicken and there's 5.2, she'll cut the 0.2 off. I mean, that's how disciplined she is. And it's great to see people at this age, she's just turned 24, that have that kind of discipline, that kind of dedication. That's the manifestation of the athlete. And that yeah. has dedication, discipline, desire, drive, and can follow through with it. And that's something that people don't do in their lives. I don't think very many people in their lives have taken three months and done everything right. Well, if you, if you flash back to Arnold back when he got here, um, he came here with, a, with a, a mission. And he was very devoted, very dedicated. And bodybuilding was what he did that really put him over the top because he was so dedicated to it that you can use that in other points of your life. The motivation and dedication you get from that, you can accomplish anything. So what's he do? He becomes the top bodybuilder, the top box office star, and a, and a governor. Three things in one lifetime because of his motivation and dedication. However, the other thing, and you'll find this on stage as well among you and the other girls, what you really want to have stand out is your charisma. You know, you'd be vocal, your charisma, your personality, smiling, and, and people connect with you. You know, the eye contact first on stage mm -hmm. and all that. As you know, people connect with you because you have that and you know how that works. Those who don't have it never get anywhere. Absolutely. They're just in the background. Well, it's success in, in anything. is If you have a success formula spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically, you're whole. But the bottom line is people look at success and look at drive, they look, go like this. What do I need to get there? Well, you have a fear of success and a fear of failure. You need to channel the success motivationally. You need to motivate yourself. I can inspire somebody. I can't motivate them. Yeah. You've got to motivate yourself. So it's a misnomer when I say I go out and do motivational speaking because I'm not going to motivate you. I'm going to inspire you and give you the tools, Right. but you've got to use them. Right. You know. So I mean, it's, it's, it's just a, a great entity if people can follow through. And I just say, people don't follow through. Then they wonder in their lives, I've made money, I have big houses. I never saw anybody on their deathbed that wish they had a bigger house and more money in the bank, yeah. ever. I know. You know? I know. Take care of it now. Exactly. And that's what we want to do. We and, want to spread and, that word. And especially now, since a lot of our friends are, are going by the wayside, you know, and, and they're not living, and you look around and you say, boy, today's a special day because I may not be here tomorrow. And we've had friends like that. They're here today and gone tomorrow. It goes so quick that you've got to embrace each day and, and make it positive for yourself. Right. It's so important. Right. Well, I think, you know, I think that's just it. People look, it's like, I've heard the saying that people save their whole lives yeah. to do what they're never going to do. Yeah. Okay, so they wait too long. So you've got to enjoy your life, you know? And there's nothing more important in a success form than feeling good about yourself. Mm -hmm. Looking good and feeling good. You don't get up and try 10 pairs of pants on or 14 dresses. That Anything you put on, you're going to look good and you're mm -hmm. going to feel good. That's and right. I try to teach to my, teach to my students that, look, you've got to have that balance. You know, the she gets off the show, they're right back on a good good program. Obviously not pre-contest, right. but they're right back on a good program. They're not out, we take them out one day, let them eat, next day they're back on. Have you noticed, and I'm sure you've noticed, I see it in my gym, these girls that train really hard and they go on the asparagus and chicken diet for I don't know how many months. Asparagus and chicken? Yeah. I only know the tilapagus diet. 
Well, Tilapagus. <laughs> Never heard of it? Tilapia and asparagus. Yeah. Oh, tilapia, the, oh, tilapia, the fish? Yeah, tilapia. Oh, no, I love tilapagus, that. Tilapagus, yeah. It's, it's the best. Yeah, that's what I. That's what you call tilapagus with yeah. the asparagus? Tilapagus, that's yeah. a, that's what they call the tilapagus. They call it asparilla. <laughs> that's a good one, too. <laughs> well, my point that? is, these girls get really down and they train with somebody at my gym over here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they go off, and within a month, they put on 40 pounds. Oh, yeah. They're blown back up. And oh the bottom God. line is, it's every time you come back down, yeah. you know, you know my story. When, at, at, when I'm in the USA, I went up like, like 55, 60 pounds, went back to Miami and did a seminar. And the kid who was in the front row, I was big. Yeah, yeah I was big everywhere. And <laughs> so the kid in the front row at the, seminar, at the seminar goes, I was in the front row. I remember. He goes, yeah, I was there. I was so excited when you won zipper, this, that, the other thing. Then he says, can you take a picture with my family and with me? Can you sign pictures? You're all pay. No, you don't pay. I signed some pictures. And he goes, what did you do? Stop training? Oh. That's I went, uh-oh. Yeah. That's it. I told my buddies with me, call the Fountain Blue Hotel. Tell them to take that refrigerator with all the drinks and candy in take it out of the room, or I'm going to throw it over the balcony when I get home. So yeah. that's it, I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Because it's representation, and that's one thing I try to get my students out. Represent what you do. Yeah. Don't train all year to look good one day and then never look good the rest and, of the year. And a lot of people do that. Oh, I know, and it guys. takes a lot of hard work just to get down to that low body fat. It does. And it's like, and why would you want to throw all your hard work away? You know who does it? Actors like Brad Pitt, people like oh, yeah. that. All of them. They do it for a movie and they're back out the next week. And two months later, fat and smoking. Well, again. They're not. They're, they're sledgehammering their metabolisms. They're stretching out their skin. They're doing things that as you get older, you just can't do because the bottom line is it shows. And then what shows. people don't realize is that all these actors um, are all on something, some sort of uh, chemical to make them look good because they have to. They're yeah. the public eye, and that's where it's filtered out. They're not just bodybuilding. Everybody in the world are taking something. Oh yeah, and growth it's, hormone uh, deal and everything. It's, yeah, it's everybody, everybody. everybody. But it basically goes down to good nutrition and the proper training. Right. And you know that. Yes, right. I do. Absolutely. I mean, we did it for 36 weeks. Absolutely. I said, I'm so proud of my girls. I mean, you saw, you saw Blanca, you saw her, and the Blanca says a kid 17 years old and 12 years old. Virginia. You know Virginia? My girlfriend? Yeah. She's 60. I know. Come on. There's a success story here. There's a, success, there's a reason these women look like they do. Yeah. You know? It's not that, hey, I've got every answer. I'm God in bodybuilding, but the bottom line is I do have over 40 years of experience in this of training competitive athletes, a lot of top level competitive athletes over the years as well as myself. So the golden era, we made the mistakes and corrected them and now they're taking the mistakes that have been corrected and they're making them again. Right. You know? Yeah. So it's got it's like it goes full circle. I mean you hear that sign and it's gone full circle. And now when I see see friends of mine and people out there that are losing their lives now because of what's going on in the sport doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's really sad. Where do you want to take this uh, as far as your uh, personal goals? Personal goals. Well, right now we're trying to build up the upper body right. um, to create more symmetry. Okay. It's going to take a lot of work, but we are on the right track and hopefully another show soon. Well, good. Yeah. We'll probably go get her back in probably April, May of next year. I don't think it's going to take that long. But she's doing She's making great games right now. <laughs> and you saw the arms. No, she's I'm sorry. Yeah, look really good. I don't think it's going to take you that long. But, you know, with him, you're on the right track. Mm -hmm. it, it'll probably come sooner than you expect. It comes quicker. He... I remember when we first started training, he was like, okay, it's going to be, we're going to pick a show soon. And I'm like, okay. And it got to the point where I was frustrated. I was like, it's been how many months? And then like, I expressed my frustration to him. And then that same weekend, he was like, girl, we're 16 weeks out. I was like, what? And the next thing you know it, we're like one day out. <laughs> and I'm over there like dying. Like I'm hungry here. <laughs> well, isn't that funny how that happens though? I mean, time just goes. It goes it fast. Does. I think the hardest, the hardest thing is people understand that this is a, this is a sport. This is an endeavor that takes time. That's all we have. It takes time. You've got to, you've got to work hard. You can continue to work hard. The people that work hardest, the longest, are the ones that are going to succeed unless you have no genetic potential whatsoever. But with genetics like this, I see her on top in the next couple of years. Oh, sure. You know, she has just amazing legs, amazing little waist, wide shoulders, and she works her her tenacity. Yeah, you, you can you do know? that. You'll do it for sure. And, and I mean, every every assault that she has in the gym is a furious assault. She's training as hard as she possibly can every time. So I'm blessed with that. I'm blessed with the girls who are working with me now in Virginia the same way. My girls, you know, and you know how Virginia looks. Sure. She just, they just train hard. I mean, Virginia's out every day, two, two, two mile walks a day before she does her training. And then, up, eating, up. And then eating right on top of it. Yeah, and eating right on top of it, 40 flights of stairs on her brakes. That's why she's at work. Two, two mile walks and 40 flights of stairs. When's the next show? Uh, we're going to see how she progresses. I hate to do that. Somebody say, oh, your next show is this, because then they're, 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 when I feel like she's made good enough gains to where we can taper her back down and go in and when we're going to do it. Okay. Yeah, because we, we brought it down pretty, 
pretty hard for nine months. Yeah. Yeah, I was no. 250 pounds. No, you weren't. Yeah, it was. <laughs> what, no, seriously? Okay, it's 248. Uh, Come on, be honest. <laughs> Uh, how heavy were you, seriously? Oh, uh, when we started, we were like 136, and uh, come show day, we, I think peak week, we were, I was sitting at 108. Yeah. And then show day, we were like 102, 103. Um, but, you know, I, I had more muscle on me than I thought. Why don't yeah. you try going up to 250? Yeah, maybe I should. Yeah, we'll feed you. Yeah. I thought you do feed me. <laughs> well, Rick was the best wrestler, one of the best ever. You could be a professional sumo wrestler. You That's right. You can do this. <laughs> right, we'll put a, okay. We'll put a diaper on you and throw you out there. <laughs> oh, you're real cute. <laughs> yeah. You know, we've known each other since the 80s, right? Oh, yeah. Look how that time has just gone by. Well, as I say, you know, remember back then, training in the gym, so that you, know, uh, time, you look at the clock sometimes and go, ah, oh, this is the longest hour, and then you're looking at a year is gone. Yeah, now we're looking 30, 37 years ago. And we, had, and we had really good workouts back in those days. Oh. Amazing but workouts. I was telling her that, you know, that, you know, I'm in the gym now. Obviously, I don't, I, I train just as hard. I, I get still out train 95% of, of course, the gym. Yeah. People in the gym. But he remembers the days when I was training hard. Yeah. We all did. <laughs> we trained. I mean, hard. The inclines, 150 pound dumbbells. I have it on video. Uh, what I do now, I, I do a machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The shoulders and stuff don't want to well, do it anymore. You know, from that business out there, I've had so many injuries in my shoulders and joints that I don't want to push that kind of hurts too much. Yeah. yeah. Plus, there, there, there's another thing as people get older. I remember when people telling me when I was, you know, it, you, when you hit your 40s, things change. I'm looking, I'm going, you 150 pound dumbbells squatting 500 for reps. Are you telling me nothing? And all of a sudden, you get like little twinges. And I get 41 and go, oh, that should be good in about a half an hour. And a month later, you're going, why is that little twinge? Uh, I, I go get a cortisone shot. But I have, uh, I'm sure you two guys in their 40s and 45. 50 years old even, and you're 60 what? 62. 62. They say, oh my God, I'm falling apart. I'm getting old. Everything's killing me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel really old. This is a 45. I'm 73. Yeah. And I feel great. Yeah. The thing is, you, as you get older, you don't train harder. You train smarter. Smarter. That's okay. Exactly. And if, if, if people look at they, they're, they're extenuating the subject. People say this, do this, this. Pretty soon somebody's doing 90 people are telling them. No, you need to follow a program yeah. that has what they call a success formula and ignore all that crap. Right, because it, it, they don't know what they're doing. No. I have uh You see what's going on in the gym now. It's a joke. A few exes that don't know how to follow rules. They, they, someone told me this, someone told me to do that, someone told me that. Just do the right thing. You right. can't go off in a million, million different directions. You'll never hit your target. Look, the human body hasn't changed in thousands of years. Oh, no, right I just thing, said that on a it show. Works. It's the same organs you had in the early yeah. 1900s, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. We need to follow a program and not follow 20. My program doesn't work with five other people's programs. It's not my program anymore. So if you gotta get that discipline and say, hey, commit, but the biggest, that's commitment. Yeah. That, like I said at the beginning of the show, take three months to commit to something and do everything perfect. I don't think very many people in this world have ever done that in their lives. No, no, I was just reading something on, I actually heard the news about lucky people and unlucky people, and the luck is just not luck, it comes from within. Oh, your, your attitude, your smile, your charisma, the way you d deal with other people, your attitude during the day, and those who are unlucky, they, they pull themselves in, they don't they don't talk to people, they don't smile, they're mad at everything, and that's why they're unlucky. Well, you know, and, and the, smile. the thing is, <laughs> she's got the best smile in the world. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes she doesn't smile when I'm with her. But anyway, you know, you look, and, and people, in, in any sport, at the elite level, we've been friends for years. Yeah. Our egos have ne never dictated our friendship. No. Nor did my ego ever mean anything to me. But of course, I, mean, I want to But I do know you shave your head because I did. I know. Okay. Absolutely. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's what I did. Um, <laughs> but ego stands for energy got out. Yeah. You're no longer, you're no longer, you're not, now that's what makes you angry. Yeah. Your ego is dictating your life. Ego has no place in your life. Nope. No place. It's like people live in the past. The past is a reference. Look at the future. What are you going to do today to make a difference in your life? Right. What is she going to do? What am I going to do? How am I going to make a difference in my life? More important, how am I going to make a difference in somebody else's life? Well, I was told years ago, what you do today, will be, you'll be a better person tomorrow. Oh, absolutely. And that's the absolute truth. You know, what you do today will it get you that farther ahead tomorrow. What you don't do and procrastinate, you're going to have to do tomorrow. So that's another day delay. You know, so you yeah. want to make it happen all the time. Absolutely, you got to go constantly better your own life, better somebody else's. And I say in all my seminars, do stuff. If you're satisfied, you have nowhere where to go but down. Right. And another thing I always say is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Right. If there's more caring going on and more understanding, and people not sitting back here and saying, "I'm going to keep all this information," in my but share, mm -hmm. share. And it, we'll say, you know, it's, if I made it top, now help the next one in line. Right. Help the next one in line. They want it too. That's the, you just pay it for. You don't just hoard it for yourself and say, I'm not going give to give this to anybody else. Can I tell you something at your age? It's really good advice. What? It's not who you know, it's who knows you. 
Very, very true. <laughs> there yeah. you go. That's very true. You know, because it's people say, oh, so I, true. I know, yeah, this guy says he knows you. I don't know. I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> he knows me. Oh, I hear that all the time. Yeah. You know, hey, hey, I'm still the same. Remember one thing, I'm on your mind, you're not on mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where can people reach you on if they want to reach you to do this? Uh, they can go to my web, to Facebook, uh, Michael Sable. Mm -hmm. Okay, they you can, see my picture. You go by Michael. Michael. Okay. Michael Sable on Facebook. You can go to ProPTA.com, right. which I'm the executive vice president of, of the, inter, of the professional Joe, private training association. Turi. Yeah, with Joe and Turi. Okay. Uh, we teach courses all over the world, but you can go there. And um, those are two easy ways to get in touch with me. Okay, and we'll put that you up. Know? Yeah. And, you know, and... Um, I'm willing to talk with anybody, willing to work with anybody. Like say, we're trying to set up a seminar tour. Okay. I'm sure you're going to be putting up the pictures of our flyer and stuff like yeah. that, aren't you, Rick? Aren't oh, I always do. Don't let my ego jump in here. Don't hurt me. But anyway, <laughs> so anyway, you know, so get in touch with any, anybody. Go to Facebook. Okay. Contact me if you're interested. I don't care if I work with one person or we work with two or 20 or we do seminars for 100 or 1,000. We'll be there for you. I'll bring the girls. You guys can actually see these yeah, people in person. Yeah, you better take me this time. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I had, to, I had to go over to Poland and do some stuff over the air and, and and she's getting ready for her show. I was gone for like seven days. Of what? And she's like, you can't go. Wait a minute, I gotta go. I'll go on the overhead. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put me in your overhead bag. I'm small I now. Him. I was like, are you gonna come back yet? Yeah, yeah. I'm in Poland doing gigs over there. And she's like, <laughs> are you on your way back yet? You come home now. <laughs> you come home now. Just like the middle of the zone. You come home now. It's done. That's funny. She got stressed. But you know what? That just shows dedication. Sure it does. That shows dedication. That shows the love for what she does and the love for me and what I'm teaching her. Yeah. You know, so and that's what that's what we need, man. This world is this world's a mess right now. It man. is a mess right now. Where can they find you on the internet? Well. Well. Hmm. Deep subject place where you store water. <laughs> I mean I'm on Instagram. That's probably it. Under what? Audrey Cow. So A U D D R E Y K A O. Two D's? Yes. In case you lose when you have a backup? Yeah, pretty much. You know. <laughs> Would it be double D? Yeah, okay. And the great thing about her, Rick, her Rick is she's just such a she's such a, a kind, nice, genuine person. Yes, she is. You know, honest. I liked her the minute she came in the door and noticed the stuff on the rug. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we're not talking about stuff on the rug. <laughs> she's now, like, we did spray it though. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> oh, thank, the oh. Yes, yeah, the dog. Whatever I didn't, didn't do it. No, you didn't do it. Now, Rick, <laughs> on camera. Yeah. So I can sue. Yeah. Because I'm not that nice. Yeah. Can you do her a picture or gold gold gym? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't even like her. What? <laughs> Sorry. I've never met a person that didn't like it. Well, yeah, you just did. You gotta do a gold gym man in a, in a bikini. Oh, yeah, okay. It I has might. to be a blue bikini. <laughs> we'll see. No, blue. Okay. With all the bling, the yeah, yeah, dazzle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. I want the real gems. Thank you guys. Thank Stay you. healthy. Thank Stay you for watching this corner, and we'll see you all next time. And um, we'll see what we'll do with her. We're not sure yet. Thank you for listening. <laughs> see you next time. All right. Bye.